Hey everyone, I have a, a special guest uh, today, Drew Taubenfeld, who's a friend of mine from Los Angeles. Um, wonderful player, not just a guitar, but uh, all sorts of stringed things. And uh, also a composer and a musical director. And uh, he, he's written this piece called Don't You Worry. And uh, we thought it'd be neat to, to have Drew play play this piece and then uh, break it down and, and give a, a lesson about it and then uh, talk about composition and recording. And uh, so without further ado, uh, welcome. Welcome, Drew. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Adam. And thanks all for listening. Um, yeah, like Adam said, I have this very short piece and I'd love to play it for you. And for anyone who's interested, I'd love to teach it because it would be really fun for me if someone else might want to play it someday. Um, here it goes. so lovely <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah that's uh that's from a record uh of yours called entropy right correct just came out uh, last week so and and, and the whole record uh, i should say is, is not like a solo guitar record there's there's all kinds of textures and uh other stuff all going on, on on the record it's 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 really beautiful and uh surprising mm -hmm. record Thanks for listening. Yeah, I kind of, um, as you say, I have these different musical lives that I've always pitted against each other. Like I enjoy making electronic music. I enjoy playing pedal steel. I enjoy playing solo guitar. And I've used to say these things. I wish I could spend so much time on solo guitar. I wish I could spend more time on pedal steel. I'm starting to accept that if I just throw all these things in a soup instead of separate them, that it might be more me than anything else I could do, you know? So that's what that is all about. Oh, hmm. Uh, beautiful. Well, that's man. That's a lesson right there. <laughs> uh, so can you can you break break this down and 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 show the, show us the moves? I've got my guitar, so I want to learn this too. Sure. I mean, it starts off with a a good old D over A. So your open A string, F sharp A and D. Yep. And let me know if I move in a way that doesn't work on this format. So feel free to stop me. So you kind of strum them off and hold it. Go up to the E string and kind of walk up while holding this D. Yep. And then you that resolve an A chord, which is A, C sharp, and, and A, yeah, exactly, so, it kind of slides, that's a, uh, it's kind of a fun move, you know? Uh, uh, oh, right. Yeah, that low A string. Show me again. Uh, so. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then the melody just keeps going up the scale. And you grab a diminished chord under that. So. Correct. And then it's a nice, 
I learned from a different solo guitar piece. It's a B minor, but I kind of felt clunky moving the melody around. So it's kind of nice that I just put the, the B string. And you... So, you know, it's, it's kind of... I feel like playing solo guitar, I, I, I try to make myself play these six string chords that... So it's some, sometimes nice is, I want B minor, so I'm gonna do a B. You know? Hmm. So that's, yeah. And you slide up to a 10th, which is on the 12th fret, a D and an F sharp. Yep, so. And that goes down to another 10th, which is C sharp and E. Yep. Hmm. And we're still on B minor, but playing it here on the 12th fret. 12, 11, 12. You know that one. And slide down to an E chord, you know. Yeah, which sometimes I'll fill in the uh, dominant seventh, depending on how I feel that day, you know. And get the low string to round it off, you know. Yeah. Repeats the first phrase, the first half of it. And then it ends slightly differently. So that's, you know. B minor. Slide down to an E. And then A, C sharp A. Yeah. And I like not having the whole A there, you know, just three notes, you know. Um, so just to play that in time. Yeah. good here is this a good uh pace and everything all yeah, right i think so um so then the b section it starts on an e sus yep and you go to an f sharp seven so yep you're you're fretting the e right not open e Correct. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Yep. And I did, you know, it's an F sharp seven again. We could if you wanted to. I just actually prefer the sound of that, you know, personally. It's not even about a dexterity, you know, it's a. Uh, I don't know. And then uh, kind of like B minor, you start on the sus, B, yeah. Uh. And then you bar that. Yeah. And then it's like a, you know, A over E to an E. Oh, wow. Just playing with suspensions. You know. And then say uh, you go up an F minor chord. And then you grab a B7. not, you know, and then it just repeats the second half of the A section, and uh, 
that's the whole tune. I could play that in time. Yeah, please. Repeats, you know, which we've already shown, and that's that's the song. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I, I listen to a lot of symphonies, and I get really daunted by how could I ever write a piece that's an hour long. And I feel like it's nice to just wake up in the morning and write a forty-second piece. It's it's just creates exploration and joy in my life. And you know, it's, it's just I'd recommend if anyone has writer's block as they call it maybe try a 45 second guitar piece and see if you can get something out of yourself you know hmm. and did you set up any kind of um uh either i don't know melodic idea or a prompt or a form or did, did, you, did you have anything in mind before you started or did you just try to clear your mind and and start start from an empty empty place that's a that's a great question and i think this one i just was was clear i was exploring a tone just trying to make the guitar sound good which i'll do a lot of times in the morning just just listen get some feedback from your ears that's a lot of how my writing will start is kind of oh and you kind of just start playing melodies and really yeah i wish i had a a, fun, a better story but that's I think this one was just kind of messing around with my fingers you know and then the title is interesting because I, I hear in in the melody like you know don't you worry like um, don't you worry don't you worry huh. I, I, I don't know if that was something that happened like were, were you hearing that or how, how, how did the title come I, I, I love that. I, I, I wasn't, but I, now I kind of want to hear someone sing it. Um, I think it was just a, a lot of the record was, was, was kind of had some darkness around it. I called it entropy. It just feels like it feels like we're living in a world that's falling apart sometimes. And and um, like, how do you engage with that? We, you know, neither me and you have the power to fix the whole thing and just just what emotion to engage with right now it changes every day and sometimes it's nice to just find a little set maybe 45 second center of like things are going to be okay and just you know live for the moment that, that's kind of that's kind of the idea around the title of there's a lot that can occupy our mind with climate with all kinds of things with election you know and it's just nice to take a center you get in the center of the storm and 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 live for a second i think hmm Hmm. Um, it's so nicely structured and, and it seems like in the moment of writing it, you, you, you weren't overthinking it, which is such a great place to be. But for, you know, it, when you have moments of thinkiness around composition, um, you know, how, how, how would you analyze this or, or how, how would you talk about some of the elements of it? Um, Sure. Great question. There's, there's, there's three, there's three things that come to mind about this one. And one is just certain, you know, motivic development, you know, very easy, you know, starting with, because I, I always try to overcomplicate things when I'm writing solo guitar music. Let me show how cool, you know, the chords I know are, but it's nice to start with something that just has some kind of melodic continuity. So this, 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 you know, it's just a, da, 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 da. that's the whole the whole song is you know you know it's very and even the b section da, 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 da. you know when i break it down like that it almost sounds stupid you know it's like there's very little variation and so what i've learned is it's okay to start, especially when making instrumental guitar music, when the, all the pressure is to show how 
good I am at guitar or how hip I am or, you know, it's okay to have a simple, almost nursery rhyme sounding song and then to color it in other ways to make it sound more interesting to yourself, you know? So yeah, if I just play this, here's my song. be like you, you know you might want to listen to some something besides nursery rhymes right there <laughs> so i think it's okay to start with that something that sounds a little boring to you maybe hmm. you know but i do really like moving rhythmic ideas around and exploring where they can go mm -hmm. um so that's one idea and then i like playing with the idea of, of a four five one you know so many different you know you've got D, E, A. So that, that can sound like that. <laughs> you know, you can do all kinds of reharmonizations. You know, I'm sure you talk about that all the time in this. But a thing that I thought was kind of fun is to just melodically, like that's, it doesn't really sound like, but it's kind of what's happening. It's four, five, one, but just letting it ring. Yeah. Which is, I think, why the second half of the tune. And, oh, I didn't, I didn't mention this in the. But the when I restate the melody, I do it over an E instead of an A. Just kind of playing with the idea of oh, now we're on a five. So I think it's kind of fun to take this concept. And just mess with it however however you want you can it can be a lot more than that hmm. yeah and, and stop me if i'm keep ranting but um, um I'm, I'm i'm thinking about it i'm i'm, I'm gonna want to write a tune later today and or or maybe maybe first thing tomorrow from a clear head and and just play with the, just those elements four and five and one it doesn't have to be um yeah it doesn't have to be every chord you know yeah it's you can exp you can get a lot out of the uh a lot out of the soup there um and one very direct compositional idea that i i, I hope anyone watching this could just take and run with this is something that i no one has taught me so i don't know what to call it but i just hear it i think a lot in, in beethoven's music and that's if you want a new section or a new chord to have something surprising, just pick a melodic note that your ear wants. You know, I'm, I like writing mel melodically driven music. You know, we're, we're starting with this thing. If you put a diminished chord under whatever melodic note your ear is hearing, you can create a surprise. And this works for pretty much all 12 notes, hmm. you know? So in this tune, it manifests I'm on the third and instead of, you know, it could have been that. But that, yeah. Yeah, right. It's a beautiful surprise, even though the melody uh, is just so naturally there. Every, you know, when you go, that's not a surprise. You know, you're, you're kind of holding our hand and, and walking us right to that corner. But yeah. then when we get to the corner, there's a there's a surprise exactly and i i think that's a fun thing to mess with this is not this is in the middle of an a section but a lot of things i'll do if i get to the end of an a like you know the end of a phrase okay where do i go next pick a note that you melodically enjoy but put a diminished chord under it so i mean it could be any let's pick the fourth you know Try a different one. It could be out of the scale, you know. You end on A and then. Wow. Yeah, it's just kind of a fun. That's beautiful. That's so nice. 
yeah so you know i am here you know you can just you can do it with any note in the 12 scale and your ear will tell you somewhere it wants to go it's just a fun surprise that's yeah and yeah, i hope people i hope that might spawn some creation in somebody else that'd be fun for me to hear yeah. about yeah i love the the part in the in the the middle section where you've got this descending line uh, uh. So there's this kind of um, this sort of moving thing. It it feels like a little Randy Newman ish, especially with all the suspensions and stuff. Sure. I I don't know if that's in your in your spice rack or not. Oh, uh, he's one of my favorite songwriters. So very good, great ear. And um, yeah, I think that's a. I think as long as you have a melody up top that has a structure, it's, it's you know, playing with chromaticism. I think where people might get in trouble is just chromaticism take up a line. But if you have a, a melody, you know, kind of your ear, I think, you know, your ear can tell you. And that, that's a fun thing to do is rather than starting what i really love is you know is to find a melody in the song where you you can kind of hear yeah that, that sounds natural to me like it like it wants to, to be there you know and i forget the artist that said you know i'm not uh, you know i'm not a sculptor i just remove the pieces of the wood that <laughs> Yeah, you know, or the pieces of the 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 stone that aren't supposed to be there. You know, right. that's kind of how I feel about songwriting. Sometimes it's hmm. there's something already existing. If I can just remove things, and find what it is. Yeah. Well, this this piece very much has that quality because uh, it, so many of the chord shapes are just two notes or or maybe three. And so you actually chipped away a lot of stone to get to just these really kind of small shapes that, that have just enough contrast and uh, motion like that, that chromatic line. It, it helps kind of pull the melody along and even the, the melody is strong as it is, but it also helps kind of pull us to the next phrase. And um, so there's a lot of, I don't know. It feels like you're you're very aware of like the natural gravity of things, and it, I could see this. By, I asked you earlier if there's words to it. Now I, I almost wonder if there could be choreography to it because there's a very just natural kind of lifting and falling uh, to, the, to all the cadences and. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think a big. Um particularly with instrumental music i say I, there's a pressure for me at least i can speak for myself to make it more complicated than that and i've started to you know i'll write and then i'll go like cook lunch or something and if i can't remember the melody in my head then i'll usually get rid of that tune you know and that that's kind of and i'm not saying that's how everyone should do it that's just my particular sensibility of what i enjoy and i think um yeah having yeah uh, it's I almost finding melodies that are supposed to be there like you say like it's everything is just moving in a way that feels like it has some you know the gravity wants it to go there and then you can put surprises in there but that's that's something that I would impart is it's not for everybody but if you're struggling and you think your tunes sound cheesy or too simple it's okay you can keep a simple beautiful melody maybe decorate it in a way that that is interesting to you that's something at least that's resonating with me at this point in my writing yeah um i want to back up uh, you mentioned that you listen to symphonies sometimes and it's intimidating as a composer like gosh how could i sustain an idea for for that long for for anyone watching this who's just never dipped their toes into that water um 
Is there a particular symphony or a particular symphonic composer that, that you find accessible or uh, inspiring or special to you? That's a great question. Um, to me, some of my favorite pieces of all time are the Beethoven string quartets. And um, the early ones are more accessible, more classical. The later ones are more avant-garde. So you can kind of pick your... Um, and the Mozart string quartets are really good. But I think it's just so it's going to put so many wonderful musical ideas in your brain. Even if you don't study them, even if you don't know what's going on, if you listen to them engaged, I guarantee your solo guitar writing will be affected. Even if you don't touch a manuscript or, or look at anything, just to hear that it's very accessible, very beautiful. And, and then again, it can be very intimidating, but what I've started to do is, you know, go for a walk in the morning, listen to a Mozart, the movement from a Mozart string quartet and then be like, oh, that was a really interesting. And then I'll go find three bars where there was an interesting change, you know, and you don't have to learn full symphonic because who has, I mean, that's not what my career is. That's not what your career is. But what you can do is take, you know, somebody showed me this recently. This is like, like you know, Bach will start from the four. So you know you're 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 going to E minor, but you're A and then and then E minor over G. So that's just a move, you know. It's really beautiful. You can you could spend the next year getting little moves out of one movement from a Beethoven string quartet, you know, and you wouldn't be done probably. So it's, that's a fun way instead of, instead of the daunting task of I need to write a symphonic thing that's an hour long, maybe grab a couple little chord changes that you, that your ear, when you're walking a dog, your ear kind of made you go, Ooh, what was that? Go home and, and get it on your guitar, you know? Right. right. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the the, the sound. Um, the, the recording of Don't You Worry is really beautiful. It, did you play it on that guitar? Yes. Um, and thank you, Adam. This is, um, it's a Guild Mark II, I think. It's a, in Hoboken in the 60s, they were making guitars in um, in Hoboken. And they made these beautiful classical guitars that are not expensive and I think are really good. And so this was, I think, in 1963 made in, in New York. And it's a great guitar. You know, sometimes you have to when you get, if you buy it off reverb, you might have to move some saddles and intonate things, you know. So yeah. maybe add a hundred bucks to the price of it sometimes. But um, it was a really, it's a really nice sounding guitar. Um, I use I have this ribbon mic actually right here. It's called an N22 from a company called AEA. And honestly, I was using a small diaphragm condenser that broke. So this is the only microphone I had I have right now. And I just sort of thought, you know, let's see what happens and was experimenting. And I think I found that putting it kind of like on the lower bout here, like, you know, if you can uh, you know, I experimented with here and here, and I kind of, I remember doing this one, I kind of tilted it up and it kind of had this thicker sound to it. And I think that's the biggest thing I could tell anybody more than preamps or anything is just finding where your microphone and your guitar is the best, you, you know, listen and move, move it around until something's pleasing to you. Hmm. This particular piece, I think it was the bottom of it, which gave it like a chunkiness, you know? Hmm. And um, there is, I think I put compression, you know, it's very, it's well, it's compressed a decent amount to get it loud. And, you know, sometimes you do too much of that and it starts to choke the sound. So you find the balance. Um, and then there's a stereo reverb, which gives it a nice kind of room sound. So those things after the fact you know i did it right in this bedroom so there's nothing really fancy going on but i think um i think once i put a stereo reverb on a single guitar channel 
that's it's really it kind of just gives it a nice it's like a, you know nice little space to it yeah 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 i tend to like stereo reverb on one mic rather than trying to mic a guitar with two two mics that that sometimes just doesn't sound uh right to me yeah yeah it's it's especially when i'm doing it at home you know <laughs> And you, you know, you come back and it's in different places and it's phasing out. You know, we're not engineers. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if you've got one mic and you figure out where it sounds sweet and good, then it's good. But if you, you are right, if you've got two mics and you you don't know what you're doing, it seems like you're the potential for those kind of phasing issues or whatever. It just is exponential when you when you start adding another mic. Yeah, and I would say just like practicing. If if you you know tried to learn a classical piece or something, it tomorrow it might not sound perfect. So don't be afraid to record a solo piece and then listen the next day and say, okay, it's it's got too much low end, and then record it again. And then if you got a friend who's recording, go to their house and hang out and say, what what are the reverbs you're using? And, and that's kind of how I've learned is by hearing recordings from friends and say, that's really, well, what's that? Oh, you should check out this verb. Or man, I place my mic. I don't do it all Freddie anymore. Try to develop some kind of community and some dialogue, whether it's in person or on the internet and try things and send things to friends. Say, well, what do you think about the sound of this acoustic? Can, what can I do differently? Or, you, you know, and that just like practicing your scales that will improve for you, you know? Wow. Well, that's great. Great advice. Um, yeah, beautiful. Well, Drew, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, to show us this piece and, and to share uh, some of your writing process and, and recording process. This, this has been uh, it's been really nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. I hope uh, I hope you all enjoy this.